Hey guys, today I'm going to take you along with me while I make the ultimate knitting project bag. I'll be using the Allwell Bucket Bag Sewing Pattern from the Allwell Workshop. I've seen this bag on Etsy and on Instagram, and I think it's very stylish and looks relatively simple for someone like me who's still pretty new to sewing. So I printed out the pattern pieces and got to work cutting them out. I have to say this is my least favorite part of sewing and it can really halt a sewing project for me, but luckily there weren't too many templates to cut out, so everything was fine. The Allwell bucket bag comes in two different sizes. One is pretty small and the other one is quite nice and large. Uh, and the pattern comes with four pattern pieces that you need to cut out, one being a template for both the front and back panel of the main body of the bag, then a small inner pocket and one large outer pocket, and of course the circle for the bottom. For this project, I'll be using two different types of denim fabric, a crisp white stain magnet and a stretchier denim that I had in my stash in this nice caramel color. I was on the fence if I wanted to do a contrast for the outer pockets, but you guys convinced me over on Instagram to do so, which I am so thankful for, by the way. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram because when I'm making projects like this, I like to get you guys involved somehow and post real-time updates of what I'm working on. So I definitely love both sizes of the Allwell bucket bag, but this time I'm making the larger version of the bucket bag because I really wanted to have something that will fit all of my whips from start to finish. So every stage of a project. And I think I can definitely fit a full size sweater in this baby. Since this is a project bag, I definitely wanna have a lot of storage. So I cut out four pieces of the outer pocket template and um, that will be like two for the outside and two for the inside. That way I can fit a lot of needles, scissors, snacks, whatever I might need to knit on the road. The instructions for this pattern, by the way, are super thorough. Amy from Allwell Workshop takes you through everything, so that made me feel really comfortable to deviate slightly from the original design. Here I'm preparing the pockets, pressing down the seams to get started sewing. Since I was using a contrasting color, I took care to wind a bobbin with both white and brown thread because I really wanted a seamless look. And then I made sure to switch out the bobbin and thread depending on the color fabric I was sewing. To base the bottom of the bag, since I was using two different colors, I used a brown thread and a bobbin of white thread. And in the end, it didn't really matter, but I am <laughs> I felt pretty like happy with myself, my sewing knowledge to even have taken it into consideration. Then it was a matter of pinning the pockets onto the main panels, sewing them up, and then sewing the two panels together to create the body of the bag, and then trimming off the excess fabric along the seams made a lot of progress on the bag, really happy with it. So here, I'm just gonna give a brief summary of what I've done so far. So this is obviously the main body pieces of the bag and um, the original pattern, I did deviate quite a bit, but the original pattern calls for like a smaller pocket on the inside, but since I'm gonna make this into like a knitting bag, I wanna make sure that anything that I'm gonna have for a project is gonna be in here or can fit well in here. Um, so I, I'm making sure that there's a lot of pockets. So what I actually did was I took the template for the outer pocket and cut um, two on my inner fabric. So I have 
really big pockets for the inside because this is the inside of the bag. And then I did right sides facing together, obviously attached two of these together. So if I bring it inside out, inside out these are the outer pockets which are exactly the same as what I have for the inner pockets and normally the pattern will tell you to make just one large pocket on the outside but again I opted for two so I have two really large pockets on the outside and on the inside and I think it actually turned out really nice um, I really actually like the contrast because I was unsure at first because I um, was going to do just all white because I really like that look. Many of you did have a really good uh, reason for me not to, not only just for aesthetic purposes, but also white is very hard to clean, as you can imagine. I'm probably going to take this around with me, so yeah, it would get messy pretty quickly. And even I think there's already one small like scuff mark on the inner pocket. So, so yeah, probably the best decision. But these fabrics are two different types. So this is more, they're both denim, not canvas actually. I don't think this is canvas. It seems like a very heavy duty denim. And this one is denim, but it's got a lot more stretch to it. So I did experience a little bit of an issue uh, with these pockets, these outer pockets that I'm kind of nervous about for the circle as well. So I did the basting stitches for the pockets and then also for the bottom. And you can see that even though they're cut out exactly the same, uh, the denim stretches a lot for some reason. And I, I'm getting like these weird, it just moves around a lot while you're stitching. So it was laying flat when I like ironed the pieces next to each other and you know pinned them up. They were all matching up perfectly. And then when it came to the end of the round, it just did this little puckering. So, and I did that over here as well. What I'm going to do next is actually hide the raw edges on the inside. So I'm gonna take some of the brown fabric, I think. I don't know. It may be a brown fabric for more contrast to kind of match the two and just cover up those um, raw edges on the inside. And then I put the bottom on. So I did one side with white and one side with brown. So this will obviously be the bottom. And I'm not too upset about the puckering. I think in the end, it it won't really show. But this is a huge bag. This, it's gonna be a pretty big size. So I'm really excited about it. So let's continue on. To make sure that the insides of the bag won't fray and fall apart, I cut out two strips of fabric of the brown denim to cover up the raw edges. So I took those two strips and folded them in half, uh, making sure to hide the raw edges of that fabric and then press them together to form this nice little, I, I guess you would call it bias tape. And then I used these really nice clips I found at my local craft store to hold it in place. So the number of layers I was using, plus given the fact I was working with really thick fabric, pins would not keep anything together at this point. So these were a real lifesaver and I cannot recommend them enough. So once that was all done, it was time to hem the the very top of the bag to prepare to insert the eyelets and grommets for the straps. So what I did was I took one of the grommets to eyeball this and make sure I had plenty of room and also followed the instructions from the pattern. It took ages, but I finally fit all of this through the machine and I think it looks pretty good. So, uh, yes. So now here is where we're at with the bucket bag. All I have left um, is to add in the grommets or the eyelets and then do the bottom. The bottom I'm not very excited about because just knowing how difficult it was to feed in 
all of these layers into my machine. I have a feeling that it's going to be really difficult to do. But I like the way it looks so far! <laughs> so I think I'm going to do the grommets eyelets next, like right here. So I did, basically I took the raw edge of the top and then folded it down um, just a little bit, like five millimeters, and then folded it in half, like an inch and a half or something like that. And I think it looks really good. I managed to be pretty straight with it. Um, it was the inside, here's the, like the, the way the lining turned out. It looks good, um, it's very thick, so um, that was very difficult to kind of press down and get it on that side, but I like the brown on the inside. I think it makes it look really nice nice contrasting color, it kind of matches the outside now. The only thing that, I'm not sure if it's just me and the way I calculated things, um, my pockets are really large in comparison to like the, the white, so I kind of wanted more white to peek out, but yeah, I mean the price that I have to pay for these pockets I think is going to be worth it because it's going to just have so much storage in here. I don't know if you can see, but lots of storage. Um, at one point I thought I was going to do lining on the inside and I'm so glad I didn't do that because honestly this is a lot of layers to work with and I think I've reached the maximum. So I'm going to go ahead and put the eyelets in and then I am going to put the, the bottom and then it should be done. So this is just a dramatic reenactment of hammering in the grommets. I was actually really nervous for this step because I had to cut holes into the bag. Uh, so basically I didn't want to royally mess up on camera. So as far as I can tell, they are secure in place now. And this brass color is really beautiful next to the caramel denim. The final step was to sew the bottom in place, which was an hour long ordeal. Again, wrestling with layers of fabric was very difficult with my sewing machine. If I hadn't found these clips, I don't know if I could have managed this part. But I did, thank goodness, and by this point I was very exhausted. This was a three-day project for me, gathering all the right materials and then taking much needed breaks in between. So I needed some time to relax and then added in the very last touch uh, to lace in this leather strap. Originally I wanted to connect both ends using a couple of brass rivets that um, I also picked up from Merchant & Mills. I don't think I mentioned that earlier about the grommets, but those are also from Merchant & Mills. I'll leave a link in the description. The truth is, I do not have the proper equipment at home to do all of this. Uh, all I got were holes in my desk, so what I just did was tied the leather in a knot and called it a day, which ironically makes this bag look really effortless and chic. So in all, a happy accident, and I'm just so in love with how this bag turned out. Now that the bag is all said and done, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I have to say, I think this is my first sewing project where I feel like I knew more or less what I was doing from start to finish, at least on the sewing side. So there were aspects of this pattern that were very new to me, of course, like the eyelets and grommets. Um, and then I have worked with denim like this before, but um, never in this shape. So I've never made a bag. And I think that, all in all, turned out really nice. I even improvised a little bit and kind of deviated away from the pattern, which was really great, by adding in these pockets on the inside. So the bag itself has a really nice slouchy fit. I think it's very modern looking. Um, really love the design, and the pattern, like I mentioned, is very thorough. Amy from All Well Workshop gives like a first overview of what you're gonna expect when you go through the pattern, and then of course she gives more detailed steps as you go. Um, really, really happy that I did a contrasting uh, pockets on the outside and for the bottom as well, because it's already getting a little dirty. I took this out once already for like a test spin, and yeah, so now it's already kind of dirty, but you know, <laughs> a little bit of a lint roll and some spot cleaning and it's just fine. The pockets are going to be fantastic for projects. I can definitely fit a sweater in here. Um, the only thing right now is that 
The strap is a little rough, like this uh, leather is still pretty stiff. So um, I will need to just, it will just loosen up over time. Like I mentioned, I was originally going to be doing something a little bit more complicated for the straps. As you can see here, it's just a uh, knot. The knot itself is not a bad thing, but I do already see it might be coming undone a little bit. So I need to think of a long-term solution for that, but for now it's okay. Um, and I decided to do one strap because after trying out two, the bag itself, I think looks much better when it's kind of slouchy and gathered, kind of like a, well, like a traditional bucket bag with like the gathers here. So I think this looks much nicer than having two separate straps um, on each side. So that's why I went for this one strap look. So when you hold it like this, I don't know, it gathers and I think it looks really pretty. In general, I don't think that this is a very difficult pattern. Um, the thing is you just need some equipment if you're gonna go the eyelet route uh, and maybe if you're gonna use leather as well. Um, you could also just use fabric from your stash or the same fabric that you're using for the bag. I was going to do that, but then um, I was gonna use like this brown fabric right here. And then it kind of just bothered me how much brown fabric there was. So I thought that this darker leather would kind of make it, would break it up a little bit and wouldn't make it look so matchy matchy and kind of, again, effortless, I don't know. I just think it gives that kind of uh, vibe. I'm just really proud of the result given my level in sewing. I still consider myself very new to sewing, um, especially, you know, those advanced techniques out there. I don't think this required too many advanced techniques, so I was able to get through it just fine. But I think that this is a really great project to do if you're interested in getting into sewing. It's knitting related as well because this will be my project bag. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me uh, make this bag. I know I'm certainly gonna enjoy this bag. I wanna take it everywhere with me. So uh, definitely glad that I took the time to make this myself. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. Be sure to subscribe for more knitting and DIY content like this. Um, I hope to do some more sewing projects in the future. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. Um, I'll probably do it anyway. <laughs> But uh, it would be nice to know what you guys are interested in watching too. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.